On this Martin Luther King Day, let's take a moment to remember the message he preached entitled Loving Your Enemies in 1957. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. confirmed Jesus' call to love those who hate us, declaring, it is love that will save our world and our civilization, love even for our enemies. King said we must first look in our own hearts and see our shortcomings and our sins. And he said we must find good within our enemies, stating, and every time you begin to hate that person, realize there is some good there and look at those good points, which will overbalance the bad points. Finally, King stated, quote, Jesus says, love your enemies, because if you hate your enemies, you have no way to redeem and to transform your enemies. But if you love your enemies, you will discover at the very root of love is the power of redemption. You just keep loving people and keep loving them, even though they're mistreating you, end quote. Pastor Terry Pearson of Eagle Mountain International Church shared this thought on Dr. King's legacy. He was a man called of God. And that it, wa it, wasn't, it wasn't Martin Luther King, but the anointing that was on him. And the anointing that was on him did not create division. It began a unification process. And did it all happen overnight? I dare say not. <laughs> there were a lot of things, but the pe changing people's hearts takes time. Dr. King's courage is a model for all who would serve their Lord and their neighbor with transformative purpose. Before God sent Joshua out to lead his people into that promised land, he challenged them, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Paul testified then in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's no better way to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or to serve his God other than to love your enemy and live in the courage of the Lord. Tim. All right, we're pleased to welcome the Director of Membership Development for the Project 21 Black Leadership Network, Donna Jackson. Donna, welcome to Victory News. It's great to have you today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Okay, we're observing Martin Luther King Day here uh, in the United States, and the nation is divided in ways that Dr. King believed that we could overcome. Have politics and government policies intended to help people actually played a part in the division? Absolutely. It's played a huge part. You know, the way to grow the government is through war and, and the poor. And there's a group of people on the left who decided that the poor is how we need to do that. And what they've done is created government policies like uh, de uh, disincentivizing fa uh, families, strong families, penalizing them if they get married. They've created asset limits that uh, created barriers to, to stop people from getting out of poverty. And so what they've done is they've created all these policies that attack the poor. And then they told them that there's other people, white people, Christians, that are the ones creating these uh, policies against them. And so they've done more to destroy uh, our faith in our government and our God than any other thing that we can see. Where do you think we are in Dr. King's dream of a colorblind society in which people are judged more by the content of their character? You know, we've moved, in, we've moved backwards and it's sad. You know, today they're saying that the only way you can judge people is by the color of their skin. That somehow everything that we are is based on a superficial color of our skin instead of the fact that God created us all in his image and his likeness. And that's the sad thing that Dr. King loved this country. Dr. King loved God, and we're saying that we need to hate what God created. Mm. As part of Project 21, and you alluded to this a moment ago, you've shared some strong perspectives on liberal climate change policies as being what you call the war on the poor. Can you explain that to us? Yes, because what it what it does is create artificial barriers that prevent people from coming out of poverty. You know, the oldest committee in Congress is the Energy and Commerce Committee because that was the thing that made America work. And energy for a lot of people represents their ability to make a living, like small businesses that uh, actually fail under high energy costs. It's not just about how much we make, but it's how much disposable income we have left over after we pay our bills. And when you increase 
energy costs, then what you do is prevent people from being able to afford those and you push them into energy poverty. Donna, this is Greg Stevens. You, critical race theory in schools has become a great debate between parents and educators. You have a unique take on CRT's goal and Christian faith. Tell us about it. Well, you know, the very foundation of faith, as you know, is salvation. And critical race theory says that white people are born evil and they're irredeemable. That means not even salvation in Jesus Christ can save them. Well, if salvation is not available to people whose skin is white, that means it's not available to anyone. And that, in fact, salvation and what Christ did for us on the cross is a lie. It's so true. If you, if we are created in God's image and I mistreat you, then technically I'm mistreating God. It's a good point. So <laughs> go ahead. No, absolutely. And it's also a war on uh, the fact that God said he made man and woman. If you're saying that the, that the man and woman is a lie, God is a lie. That means there is no male. There is no female. Okay, so how did Project 21 get started and what are its goals, Donna? Project 21 started back during the Rodney King riots that uh, said, where many were saying that the only way that black people know how to uh, to uh, react is through violence. And Project 21 said that wasn't true. We believe in self-sufficiency. We believe in upward mobility, capitalism, and free markets. We believe in, that everyone has the opportunity to make sure their neighborhoods are safe and that we treat each other with respect. Okay. So we have a group of people that got together and, and pushed against this narrative. And, and I am so appreciative and glad that you did. Where can we find out more about Project 21? You can hear about Project 21 at the nationalcenter.org. Um, we have strong people of faith. We have people that believe that this constitution is real and it's available to everyone. Nationalcenter.org, and I encourage everyone to go there. Donna, thank you so much for being with us today and for the clarity that you have brought. Thank you for having me, it was a pleasure.